Hi, Stephen from Mona Disso. Well, as some of you may already know, my favorite laptop is my 17 inch Clevo P870TM. Now I did toy with the idea of selling it, but hey, it's part of the family now. Uh, but I have always been drawn to laptops with replaceable desktop CPUs and replaceable MXM graphics cards. So I was dying to try out the Evoc X1702 or the Clevo X170KM and HID Evolution were kind enough to loan me one. The starting price is $2,500 and that will get you a desktop i5-11600K and 130W3060 plus a 300W 1080p G-Sync panel. But you can also go for a 4K G-Sync panel as well as an i9-11900K and a 165W3080 for just over $3,500. My unit had the i9, the 3080, 32GB of RAM, which is actually upgradable to 128GB, plus the 300Hz 1080p G-Sync panel, which at 300 nits and 93% of sRGB was pretty standard, but it did look pretty nice, especially as the slimmer bezels made its footprint much smaller than my 870TM. Ghosting performance wasn't quite as good as I expected for a 300Hz panel, but it's nice to have G-Sync and there is no Optimus, so you are guaranteed to get the max performance. So yeah, this laptop is for those that want a true desktop replacement and don't mind carrying around just over £10 plus an additional £4 with the two 280W power bricks that are required. They actually use the same bricks that are used by the GE76 and the GE66. Now I was disappointed by the fact that it could not be powered with just the one brick, even just for charging it up or gaming in perhaps a lower powered mode. So you are stuck with the two bricks, so please keep that in mind. And battery life was expected at 1 hours 51 minutes from the 97 watt hour battery, so it is good to see that it is easy to pop in and out and put a spare one in should you wish. Now with all of this power, it is also good to see some very good air intakes underneath. And it's very easy to get into and service. Now you won't find many laptops with a subwoofer as large as this 5W one. And at the front, there are two large 3W speakers. Now they're not quite as loud as my P870TM, but they're definitely better than average with great bass and no distortion. You also get Creative Super X5 built in, which simulates surround sound speakers. Now, unfortunately, it failed my real time latency test. You will notice the CMOS battery, which I actually had to unplug once because the system did crash on me and became unresponsive. Fortunately, HID's tech support was very fast at providing the fix, and clearing the CMOS got me back up and running in just a few minutes. Here is the 11900K, which I believe HID Evolution did delid, and beside it is the MXM based RTX 3080. So, in theory, you can replace or upgrade it, but you know, these things are crazy expensive. At one point, I was considering upgrading my uh, GTX 1080 in my 870TM to a 2080, but it was going to cost me $2,000. Cooling is done by two very large fans, much larger than you'll see on most other systems. You have 9 heat pipes and 4 heat sinks, and when you see how many watts this beast use uses, you will be pleased that you have this cooling under the hood. Now for storage, you have 4 M.2 slots, which is fantastic, perfect for lots of video files and games. My 870TM had 3 M.2 slots and 2 2.5 inch drives, but the X170KM not only has a smaller footprint, but it is thinner than my 870TM, which, as we all know, can be used for weightlifting. On the left, there is a fast UHS-2 SD card reader, two USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A's, a headphone mic jack, and a Tune 1 microphone SPDIF optical output. You have a third USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A port on the right, plus you have two Thunderbolt 4 ports. Over at the back, you have a USB-C, you have two mini display ports 1.4, HDMI, RJ45 jack, and the two power ports. Now you'll also notice that around the back and the hinge area is an RGB light bar that can be adjusted using their software. And I thought it does add a nice subtle bling that can be reflected off of your table. The perky RGB keyboard was a pleasure to use. Key lighting was bright and via the software you can either choose one of the pre-built patterns or change the color of each individual key. The keys are also macro capable. 
customize an individual key as a hotkey or assign multiple keystrokes to one key. The keyboard deck is made out of black anodized aluminium which has a brushed finish to it and it does show some smudges so make sure to keep a rag handy. I did like the Windows Precision trackpad. It was a nice size with large mouse buttons that were easy to click and they were quiet to operate. Integrated in the top left hand corner is a fingerprint reader. The aluminium lid is fairly subtle with the Evoc logo. HID Evolution do offer vinyl wrap should you want a more stealth look and also they offer laser engraving if you want your own artwork applied. So it's got a 720p webcam which I think is a little bit disappointing because the 870TM had a 1080p one so that is a shame. Now it does pick up a lot of background noise, you may hear a lot, of, I do have a lot of fans in the background and you can hear those. Likewise when you're typing and also if, should you have to activate max fan it picks that up as well so that is a shame. I was expecting the Prima BIOS like I have on my 870TM which is like the advanced BIOS you see on MSI laptops. Now the main thing of note in the BIOS here is the ability to switch on and off the CPU overclocking. Doing so will allow you to change the CPU performance as long as you are in performance mode. You can change the core clock across all 8 cores, change the power limits which by default are as high as 251 watts as the short term PL2 and 130 watts as the PL1. You can change the CPU VR limit in order to prevent it from throttling down due to excessive current, but I chose to leave this on automatic. And you can apply an offset on a volt which I found negative for 80 mV to be the max stable setting. And with these settings, I was able to get a Cinebench R20 score of 5798, which is a very impressive score for a laptop. Now at stock, the 11900K was 9% faster than the Ryzen 7 5800H, but when overclocked, this jumped to 17%. Now I will be doing a separate video comparing how this CPU performs against other laptop CPUs and also the 10900K in my desktop, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Performance mode with its PL1 of 130 watts is pretty hard to cool, especially when you have a 165 watt RTX 3080. You are much better off using the entertainment mode. Here I show Far Cry New Dawn, 1080p ultra settings with performance mode and max fan at the top, entertainment mode and quiet modes below it using the auto fan. I also show the fan noise and decibels for each power mode and as you can see, there is no difference between fan noise with the max fan and auto fan under load. Performance mode cannot cool the CPU at 129 watts. The 3080 runs fine with a similar power usage. In entertainment mode, the CPU drops to about 110 watts and the 11900K is a good 5 degrees cooler. And if you want to play with hardly any fan noise at all, quiet mode is your golden ticket. Sure, the watts and frame rates do drop, but in all of my game testing, each game was playable at max settings with the quiet mode. In fact, quiet mode at idle and at load had the same fan noise, which is incredible. And even performance mode at idle was the same. So the X170KM is the perfect laptop to use in settings where you need to be quiet, with the knowledge that you can blast the air should you need to. This thermal image shows the laptop under load and it is the coolest chassis I have ever seen. You can also create your own custom fan profile, which I advise using in ent entertainment mode. And this did result in a reduction of a couple of degrees of temperature and also two decibels quieter. Now normally Far Cry New Dawn's benchmark sucks on these new RTX 3000 laptops, but hell, not with this one. It beats up the 3080 in the Helios 300 by an eye-blistering 47% and the 125W3070 by 19%. Even using quiet mode, we got an average of 59 FPS, which is similar to a 1650 Ti. Here is Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p with ray tracing at ultra and DLSS at balanced. I show performance, entertainment and quiet modes so you can get a feel for the temperatures and the frame rates. Performance mode sees a greater fluctuation in CPU temperature from 77 to 99 degrees. The CPU using up to about 168 watts is quite amazing. Most laptops would hemorrhage at anything over 70 watts. 
And at one point, I saw the 3080 show 180 watts, but mostly it was in the 140s and 150s. But look at good old quiet mode, still able to get over 35 FPS. And even at 4K, I got 34 FPS at this setting. The 3080 was 21% faster than the 125W3070 and 50% faster than the 130W3060, which were all being used with a dedicated GPU mode. Here was Shadow of the Tomb Raider 1080p DX12 higher settings. There really isn't much difference in frame rate between the performance and entertainment. But as soon as the CPU watts goes up, and the entertainment mode is your better thermal option. 37% faster than the 3080 in the Helios 300, in part because that uses Optimus, but that is a big difference. Even quiet mode was faster than the RTX 2060. So yeah, I think the 3080 in this Evoc is amazing. It runs cool, and although it didn't overclock very well, the level of performance you get is amazing. I would like to see how this compares against the 165 watt 3080 in the Legion 7. Now entertainment is the power profile I would use for competitive gaming and to be honest quiet mode for casual gaming in a family room. You literally have the best of both worlds here. Sure it is heavy and it's not travel friendly at all with those two power bricks but it is a portable powerhouse and handles 4k pretty well even at max settings. Now what a shame you cannot power it with just the one brick, even in quiet mode. I also thought the webcam is a bit disappointing at this price level, but for the price you get, you get top-notch storage options, up to a massive 128GB of RAM, and desktop class components that can be replaced. Thank you for watching. If you found my video of value, consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time. Bye.